The following lesson is linked to learning outcome three, writing and presenting. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to reflect on, analyze and evaluate their own work, consider the opinions of others and present a final draft. Learners should be able to use set criteria for evaluation of their own and others' writing. They should also be able to improve coherence and cohesion in overall structure. Hello, welcome. I'm Nicola Shongwe. In the main part of this lesson, we looked in detail at different types of subordinate clause that tell us more about the main clause. In this extension lesson, we're going to cover sentences for clear communication. So I'm going to teach you about writing sentences that are not only grammatically correct, but that are also informative and easy to comprehend. Here are the techniques that we're going to focus on. To learn to communicate clearly, put the main idea in the beginning. Use the active voice. Use an appropriate length of sentence and avoid ambiguity. Let's begin with the first point on the list. Put the main idea in the beginning. This conveys the message clearly, and then you follow it up with less important information. Here's an example. Calcium is essential in the prevention of osteoporosis, also known as the brittle bone disease that causes bone fractures in older people, especially females. Here, the main idea is that calcium is essential. It helps to prevent osteoporosis. This is the important information, and it's given first. After this, the less important information is introduced, such as another name for osteoporosis, brittle bone disease, and who the disease affects, older people, especially females. So the message is clearer if the main idea or the subject appears at the start of the sentence. Now let's move on to the next topic on the list. Use the active voice. Sometimes we use the passive voice because we want to sound more objective. But for most everyday writing, it's better to use the active voice because it's clearer and more direct. Here's an example. The dry ingredients should be sifted together. The milk and eggs are then added and blended into a batter. In this example, the passive voice has been used. It is grammatically correct, but it does sound clumsy. This is obviously a recipe of some sorts, but it doesn't sound like the recipes that we're used to reading. This sounds better. Sift the dry ingredients together. Add milk and eggs and blend into a batter. This is in the active voice. It is much more direct. The reader is being instructed. From this, we see that the active voice encourages action and that simple sentences are clearer and more direct. This brings us to the next topic on the list. We've looked at it before, but it's so important that I want to bring it up again. Use an appropriate length of sentence. But remember the warning. Don't make your sentences too long and confusing. Be on the lookout for the following indications that your sentences might be too long. The first indication is if there are very few full stops. This means that you probably haven't given enough breaks or pauses between the different ideas and thoughts. The next indication to look out for is linking words. Linking words or conjunctions such as and, but or because all indicate that you're moving on to a new idea. So stop and consider whether you should rather be starting a new sentence. 
The next indication that your sentence may be too long is commas. We've learned before about the comma splice error. When you see a comma, always check that it's there for a good reason and not simply to join a new idea to the sentence. As I've said before, it might be better to start a new sentence afresh. The final indication to look out for is brackets. When you include extra information in brackets, always consider whether it's appropriately placed or whether it should actually be in a new sentence. Let's now quickly recap the indications that your sentence might be too long. Be on the lookout for few full stops, linking words or conjunctions, commas and brackets. Remember, we're learning about communicating clearly and we've just learned how important it is that your sentences are of the appropriate length. Let's move on now to the final technique for communicating clearly. Avoiding ambiguity. Ambiguity means that there is more than one possible interpretation. Look at this sentence and see if you can find two ways that it could be interpreted. We heated hot chocolate because it was cold. What was cold? The weather or the hot chocolate? This sentence does not make its meaning clear. Here's another example. Sipo wanted to play soccer very badly. Does Sipo want to be a bad soccer player or is he desperate to take up the sport? Well, from that sentence we can't tell, so the sentence is ambiguous. The main cause of ambiguity is that you know what you're trying to communicate but your reader doesn't, so you have to make sure that your sentences are clear. This lesson has been about techniques for communicating clearly. Let's recap these techniques. To communicate clearly, put the main idea in the beginning of the sentence. Use the active voice. Use an appropriate length of sentence and avoid ambiguity. Well, we've come to the end of our lessons on sentences. In this series, we've learned how important it is to communicate clearly and to make your writing informative, interesting and grammatically correct. That's all we have time for and as usual, keep reading, keep practicing. Thank you for joining me and goodbye.